Hello everyone, my name is Vaibha Gogol. I'm a group product manager in Google. And uh, today I'm going to talk about building applications with unmasked scale and reliability with transformative databases. And in this case, the transformative database is Cloud Spanner. So I have full uh, packed agenda, so let's dive right into it. So first I'm going to introduce Cloud Spanner to you, talk about some of the industry use cases uh, which people are building with Spanner, uh, talk about uh, particular financial services, scalable architecture uh, use case uh, where they are using Spanner. So to give you an understanding of how a scalable workloads are built on Spanner. And last but not the least, we'll talk about some of the latest innovations and highlights uh, within Spanner. So let's talk about what is Cloud Spanner. So Cloud Spanner is a fully managed, horizontally scalable relational database service. So there's a lot which is packed into that particular statement fully managed. So basically, you don't have to worry about binary upgrades, applying patches and everything. We take care of that for you. On the horizontal scalability, this is something which you probably have uh, uh, heard from non-relational databases. Uh, Spanner does automatic sharding of data. Uh, it's a distributed RDMS and has near unlimited scale. Uh, so that is something which is offered to you without compromising on consistency. So it's a fully relational database service with full SQL support, asset transactions, schemas, and everything. Uh, it's a zero maintenance downtime service. So something you don't have to worry about. Even the schema changes are applied uh, while you are completely online. Uh, it offers zero RPO, zero RTO uh, in case of a zonal failure in a regional instance and uh, zero RPO, zero RTO in case of a regional failure in a multi-regional instance. Uh, and uh, it's zero touch global replication, uh, all the security and compliance which you can hope from an uh, enterprise database service. In terms of metrics, Spanner is extremely scalable. So Spanner processes over 2 billion requests per second at peak and has more than six exabytes of data under management. Speaks about the scale at which Spanner operates. As you know, uh, Google has a number of billion plus user product and a number of them are running on Spanner. In terms of industry verticals and use cases, by no means this is a comprehensive list of all industry verticals, but just calling out the six. Here, there are multiple more. Uh, Spanner is extremely popular in gaming with user profile and, uh, and leaderboard and real-time gameplay data, all those use cases. FinServe, uh, customers are building uh, online digital banks on Spanner with full user account data. Uh, ledgers are built on Spanner. Healthcare, we have full EMR systems being developed on Spanner. Retail, we have uh, supply chain management, inventory data on Spanner, extremely popular with retailers around the world. Technology, we have real-time decision-making uh, workloads on Spanner. And last but not the least, media entertainment, there's digital rights management catalog, metadata, a number of those kind of use cases. This is just a snapshot of customers. Uh, and there are uh, uh, like so many of them, we can't talk about each, each one. But as you uh, saw in the previous slide, gaming, we have Bandai Namco, we have Com2Us, uh, retailers, we have Macy's here, Home Depot here, a uh, lot of other customers in, in retail using it. Uh, in terms of financial services, we have PayPal, Goldman Sachs, ANZ Bank, Deutsche Bank, again, uh, some very mega banks and services who for the next generation of architecture are using Spanner in terms of Healthcare, we have Davita uh, building an EMR system on Spanner. Uh, technology, we have ShareChat and Snapchat and Vimeo. So a lot of customers are trusting their workloads with Spanner. Now let's talk about the scalable architecture with Spanner. As I mentioned, I'll use a FinServe customer use case. So uh, some of their functional and technical requirements are mentioned on this slide. On the functional side, customers want transactions with full traceability. Uh, they want to make sure you can meet their availability requirements, SLAs, which are set by their regulatory bodies. Uh, they want to have scaling on demand and they want to pay for what they are using. They want best in class security controls. And last but not the least, uh, you as a cloud provider uh, should be qualified by the regulatory body to offer services. And in terms of technical requirements, just mapping to the functional one, they want high availability, uh, near zero operational overhead and ability to scheme, seamlessly scale the workload based on demand. And uh, last but not the least, they want uh, 
availability of operational data in real time and analytical systems so they can drive insights and make business decisions based off of that. Uh, this is just a, a, a representative architecture of an omni-channel banking use case. You can see a customer is accessing the same data from different channels, whether it's mobile, web, uh, through a, a API gateway. And on the operational side, it's something to call out is with operational with scalable operational database like Spanner, you want a scalable compute, which is GKE. So GKE and Spanner uh, kind of uh, solution from architecture standpoint, we see as a very common architectural pattern. And then you have integrations into different analytical systems, whether it's BigQuery, wire data flow, pops up, and uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, we provide you like uh, seamless integration into some of these other GCP services. And then there's governance, which is offered through security and uh, like uh, and KMS and some of the other services which are there. Now let's talk about some of the latest innovations and highlights uh, which we have in Spanner. And we'll start with an uh, initiative called as democratization of Spanner. This has been in the works for quite some time and we have launched a lot of capabilities related to this. And democratization of Spanner includes two main elements. One is the cost. Second one is uh, improving the familiarity and providing a familiar interface to access span. On the cost front, uh, one of the key uh, like uh, capabilities which we recently introduced is committed use discounts. So uh, what is CUTS or committed use discounts? Basically, in lieu of your commitment to Spanner, uh, we offer you discount on your compute capacity, which is node pricing, you can say, or processing units. So uh, if, if, uh, if a customer or user makes a one-year commitment uh, on Spanner, we give 20% discount. Uh, and uh, for three-year commitment, it's 40% discount. The, and these are spend-based committed use discounts, so extremely flexible. So you can just commit, okay, I'm going to spend, let's say, $100 or $1,000 an hour on Spanner. And you can apply those discounts on whether in particular region or multi-region anywhere. So it's extremely flexible that way. And it gives you full utilization of what you have committed for. Next is granular instance sizing. So uh, as you probably know, a single node in Spanner can do quite a bit, uh, just based on YCSB test. One node in Spanner can do 10,000 reads or 2,000 writes. Now that's quite a lot. Uh, probably mostly suited for larger workloads. Now there's customers who said, hey, we have smaller workloads and we want that four nines or five nines of availability for them, or we want that scale insurance which, provide, which Spanner provides, or I'm using Spanner for this workload and I want to just standardize on Spanner for everything. So for those kind of use cases and everything, we, are here, we have uh, launched granular instance sizing. So, uh, with that, we introduce a new unit called as processing unit. So one spanner node will be equal to 1,000 processing units, and you can buy as less as like 100 processing units. So you get proportional resources for proportional price. So almost for $65 a month, you can get started on spanner with 100 processing unit region instance, get, get four nines of availability, and then you can scale with 100, 200, 300, all the way up to 1,000 and then 2,000, 3,000. And in fact, you can apply committed use discounts on top of uh, granular uh, instance sizing as well. So you can uh, almost get started less than $40 a month if you buy a three-year committed use discount on top of Spanner. So extremely uh, cost efficient uh, and ideally suited for smaller and medium-sized workloads. Uh, and we have seen massive adoption for granular instances uh, within Spanner as the same product with the same SLA. Uh, we just launched free trial instance and the uh, what exactly are free trial instances? What, what do we offer? So basically you get one free instance uh, uh, per project and you get 10 GB of storage for free and uh, you get a 90 day free trial period with that. And, uh, you can create a, a free trial instance. You can kick the tires with Spanner. We have provided tutorials, sample apps, so you can get familiarize yourself with Spanner very easily. And it offers a lot of those capabilities which are available in Spanner anyways. And uh, it's much easier for you to now try out Spanner and get used to it. 
Uh, we provide you flexibility to upgrade to a paid instance any period of time within those 90 days. And if you're not upgraded in 90 days, we'll give you one month of grace period with that. And uh, it's kind of uh, extremely uh, popular within our customers as well as prospects. So please give it a try and let us know uh, what your feedback is. Uh, and last but not the least, on the cost front, uh, democratization of Spanner, we have a free local emulator uh, uh, where you can, which you can use for your uh, unit test and CI/CD pipeline. You can bake it into that. We also have a community contributed auto scaler, which a lot of our customers are using. So it can automatically scale and uh, scale up and down your workloads. It has flexible deployments models, and depending on your ch uh, choice, you can use it. Now let's come to the familiarity aspect in the whole democratization of Spanner initiatives. So earlier this year, we launched PostgreSQL interface on Spanner in GA. Now the goal of us introducing PG interface on Spanner was uh, familiarity. So we want uh, customers to use Spanner for all the goodness which it provides, whether it's high availability, uh, whether it's that uh, uh, near unlimited scale and without compromising consistency. Uh, with a familiar interface like Postgres, because a lot of customers, a lot of users are already uh, uh, familiar with PG. Uh, so they don't have to go through that onboarding ramp to understand Google SQL and uh, use our proprietary APIs. So that was the key goal. Uh, application portability you can get. Uh, so God forbid, if for whatever reason you have to exit out of Spanner, you have built your application with Postgres SQL interface. So it would be much easier for you to port out of Spanner and definitely it will help you in accelerating adoption of Spanner within your organization. So one thing to note is 100% uh, compatibility with Postgres is not our goal, it means uh, what we are aiming for is providing you connectivity with the wire protocol support, tools, drivers, ORMs, full processing support with query dialect functions, and uh, on the storage side, most important aspect for us is data fidelity is maintained. So we'll provide uh, uh, data types, you know, support for Postgres data types, DDL indexes. Uh, so for example, Varchar uh, is a data type which is supported on Postgres SQL interface, and we want to make sure you have access to those same familiar data types. And again, uh, with Postgres, you get all the same things which Spana offers uh, with a familiar dialect. Now let's talk about some of the key enterprise and developer capabilities which we have introduced uh, recently. First and foremost, let's talk about Spanner change streams. So this is native CDC uh, change data capture capability into Spanner, uh, extremely flexible. So basically uh, a user can configure a change stream or multiple change streams on their database, whether you want to listen to a column, multiple, different groups of columns or a table or an entire database, you can just issue a DDL and you can configure your change streams. Uh, it will basically, the straight change streams are uh, synchronously updated, so it's strongly consistent. Uh, that's the way we have built it internally. And you have you can configure the change stream data to be retained from a minimum period of one day to uh, up to seven days. It depends on what your needs are. And uh, we have um, uh, given like uh, managed connectors to you with uh, the data flow connector, which is available. Now you can use a data flow connector and you can, uh, you have uh, templates by which you can plumb your data into different uh, like things. So for example, there are three main use cases where which customers use change streams for. First and foremost is analytics. So you want to, uh, keep on replicating all the data changes from your operational data into your analytical database. Uh, so in this case, let's say BigQuery. So you can do that. There's a data flow connector and a template for that. Uh, you want to trigger downstream applications based on changes which are happening in, in your OLTP data database. So that is also available. And last but not the least, uh, you want to archive all the changes which are happening uh, in your operational database into GCS. That is possible through auditing and archiving. Next is fine grain access control. So Spanner today supports IAM based database level access controls. Now on top of that customers requested, hey, I want final level controls like table level, column level access. 
So based off of that, and especially this is from a lot of our regulatory, even retail customers. So we are introducing finally an access control system preview. Please give it a try. It's traditional SQL role-based access control. And uh, it works in conjunction with fine grain access control. So very easy to use uh, different use cases as listed on the slide, departmental access, if you want to provide only regional access, if you want to provide, you can enable a bunch of these. And uh, sec now uh, let's talk about Vertex AI integration. So this is an extremely cool capability. Uh, a lot of customers requested that, that, hey, we want to in real time derive insights through machine learning models and inform our transactions based off of that. So with that, we are announcing Vertex AI integration in Spanner with Spanner ML. So what you can do is uh, you can register a Vertex AI model into your database uh, via issuing a DDL. And then you can invoke that uh, Vertex AI model via uh, a span ML command from within a transaction. So it definitely is very easy from a development standpoint, improves your efficiency, lower all over transaction latency you can experience with this because otherwise if you have to do it outside, it's a very involved process. So uh, for example, in this particular use case is shown that you have items selected, you do a checkout, and then you do this ml.predict. There's a model which is already registered in database and you invoke that and you pass on the data from Spanner it runs it via the machine learning model and then the model results are served via Spanner. And then you can know whether it was a safe transaction or something that you have to review. So extremely cool capability. And last, we continue working on improving. Uh, this is more on the developer capability side, providing support for Java and Go applications by supporting JDBC for Java and PGX for Go or for Postgres. So you can have full portability and scalability for applications which are you developing uh, via the PostgreSQL interface on Spanner. And uh, building on uh, some of those developer capabilities, so we launched Query Insights earlier. I, uh, uh, this is an extremely popular launch where if you see high CPU utilization, you can go through the step, three-step journey of confirm, uh, confirm, identify, and analyze to exactly know what was the reason for high CPU utilization and diagnose it and fix it. And building on query insights, uh, I'm happy to announce that we'll soon be launching transaction and lock insights as well. Well, you, similar to query insights, you will have pre-built dashboards for developers to troubleshoot high latencies due to lock contentions. You can exactly see and relate the row ranges uh, with high lock contentions, which are there. So uh, like a very helpful capability for a lot of customers. And uh, with this, I'd like to conclude on the next steps. There are a bunch of resources listed here. Please stay in touch with us. Try out Spanner via the Cloud Spanner free trial uh, and keep on, uh, keep on providing us feedback or any requests which you may have. With this, I'd like to thank you for your time and attention. Uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of next. Thank you.